Anybody? Have you got fun? God was in control. The apostle Peter left God in control. They were not preaching something that the people wanted to hear. They was reminding the people of what they should hear mm. and what was that. And, and really coming against their own their own rules and regulations. Right. But this was that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Remind them of what Joel the prophet said. Yeah. And every time the apostles mm. preached, they never preached their own subject. Right. right. You, you, you see that? Yes. This is what's happening today. They never, if I had the, I ain't got a problem with topics because I use topics. But some of these topics can get ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And it blows out of the contents of the spirit of God. Yeah. And nothing to do with the word of God. Because they're trying to please the people, leaders. You can't please the people when you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have to please the Lord. You have to follow the instructions on what God, I don't care what they say and how mad they get and how frustrated they may sound. You got to preach the gospel. Prophetess, you can't, you can't, and I'm not saying you do it, I'm just using an example. You cannot pick who you're going to prophesy to. Mm. I can't wait to get into the prophetic thing because you have no control of what's being said. None whatsoever. Whenever you feel that you have control, you don't know your calling. And you're not ready for your call. And you need to sit back and learn your call. The apostles cannot get up and teach what they want to teach. They cannot go against the principles. And that's, what's, that's why people do not believe in the apostles today. Because I have not heard, I heard one apostle, someone, and that's my mentor, and I disagree with his principles, or his method, or his doctrine, or whatever you want to call it. I believe in women preachers. That's the only problem I got with him. He don't believe in women preachers. He feels that if you call to be a preacher, or you're a woman, you're sinning. I don't, that's not what the word says. And that's the only fight I had with him. Other than that, but I don't hear too many apostles getting up and preaching the principles of the gospel. What is the principles you just read it? This is what that was spoken by the prophet Joel that it shall come to pass, said God in the last days that I shall pour out my spirit among all flesh. That man of God, that chief apostle, who was preaching in the 14th verse of the second chapter of Acts, made his introduction by addressing the crowd and reminding them of what the prophets left. They was reminding every soul of what the prophets left. They repeated what the prophets said. That's like we got to repeat what they said. Because what they said, they got it from Jesus. And what the prophets said, got it from God. Tell me why is it that it's not like that today. They left the principles of the gospel. That's why the churches are not being filled up. Because we left the principles. We're going where we want to go to preach, not where we're supposed to go. What did he say? Go into what? Some of the world. All oh, the world. And preach the gospel to only the Chinese. To every creature, apostles. And we are not to stay in this church, but to stay there to build it where it's supposed to be built, and you got to go. That's why I got a problem. If a prophet comes and be a member of a church, you can say I'm wrong if you want to. That's your business. If a prophet comes and be a member of a church under a person that's not a prophet. Now, if you want to come there and help, fine. If you want to come there and fellowship, fine. But he or she cannot be under no one that is not a prophet or an apostle. That's out of order. That pastor is on, watch this, first apostles, then prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You cannot receive no instructions on how to walk or to keep walking in your calling if you go under someone who don't know what your calling is all about. How can you do that? If that young man would have just stayed focused when the Lord told him, don't go back into that city. 
but stay away from the city. He disobeyed God because somebody came and told him that they were a prophet too, but they didn't have the right instruction because if they did, they would have instructed him, God said, for you not to come here. God, I felt that in my spirit. Yeah. How are you going to sit underneath a man who is not an apostle, a woman who is not an apostle, and you are called to be apostle? What they can, what can they teach you? They can't teach you nothing. They can tell you some stuff that they read, but they can't teach you nothing. The church is backwards. First apostles, then prophets. Evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And if the truth be told, the evangelists don't supposed to be standing in the church. Because they got the same assignment in terms of preaching as the apostles. You're going to read in this book of Acts as we go journey that God get me in this. Philip was, was one of the sevens, right? What did he do? Stayed at the church? He was preaching. Wasn't he? Yeah, he was. To a man, for some of you, I want you to read that. I'll send that text to you. I read it. For all you folks that say a man can't tell you nothing, that eunuch said, when Philip asked him, what you reading? The book of the prophets. He said, uh, you understand what you read? He said, how can I understand it except a man? Teach me. Yeah. That's not a male agenda, but it's a male and female. For you thinking, and if anybody come to your church or under your district and tell you they're not listening to man, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Let them go because they got an agenda. And that agenda is to take over your district. Mm -hmm. You got to put them out. You can't be, a, I'm, I'm starting back to my old school. I'm putting them out. Get out. You want to have your, get out. And please don't come back. And if you push me too much, all those blessings that you had will be taken away from you. Out of your own mouth, we're going to be justify your words. And by them same words, you're going to be condemned. Strong apostles got to stand up. What? You're going to go into, when we go into the fifth chapter, you're going to notice that Peter wasn't a panel problem in putting people to the death. You know what happened when it happened? When that happened, when he did that? You know why fear is not in the church? Because we, let me put myself into it, I put up both of my hands, we are too afraid to stand up and address the church like we're supposed to. We're afraid that we're going to lose members. We're afraid that we ain't going to get tired players. We're afraid to get sued. If they take me to jail, take me to jail. But the gospel is going to be preached. And what happened? You're going to read into this book as we go into travel and journey into this Acts of the Apostle that those people were put to death right before the church. And the Bible says, and fear came upon the church. There's no fear because there's no respect. There's no respect because there's no fear. People say do what they want to do because we're scared of that. Nobody got more power than you if they're under you. Nobody. And you don't be intimidated by no man. Whoever comes under you, you hold that mantle. I got to go. You hold that mantle in your hand. And you stand up to the gospel, just like you told that young man when he got an attitude and threw the phone down, and you looked at him and says, now do it right. That's right. Yeah. You got to hold your grounds. You got to really tell him, all right, this is kingdom living, prophetic worship center, and I'm the pastor. And if you can't obey the rules and regulations of kingdom living, prophetic worship, I don't care who you is, get out. Mm. Leave now. Yeah. That was heavy. I never seen him before, never, never met him before. 
but the Lord used me to call that out. Yeah. Because the rest of them were hiding it. They what? were all just passing it up under the rug. Jesus. And I walked into the church. We had a service. We were up on the pulpit praying. Jesus. And the Lord spit that out of my mouth. Yeah. And they brought him down out of the pulpit and escorted him out of the rug. Yeah. But see, that goes to show you how God, you might hide something from the people right. and try to sweep it up under. But when God is tired of it, he's going to call it out. And he's going to call it out in front of everybody so you can't hide it no more. Right. And, and, and let me tell you something. And, that's and he he's going to give you. Now watch this. Wait a minute now. He's going to give you a warning before he do that. Exactly. And he's going to give you the chance to it. clean it up. That's so you thing. can't say he's going to do it all of a sudden. No, no he's doesn't. not going to do that. No, if doesn't. you do keep Gives doing you what chance. you're doing, whore-mugging, whore-mugging, whore -mugging. Look, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you can't contain yourself, get married. Amen. Yeah, that's it. When it gets to the place where my flesh is where it cannot control itself anymore, God send me a wife. Direct me to the wife that I need. That's going, and I just don't want any wife. Because a woman is easy to find. But a lady is hard to find. Because anybody else, a woman can come out. No, I want a lady. A woman of God. Someone who is going to be at that altar with me. Who is going to trust me and going to work with me. Amen. I don't want nobody that's not going to be fighting against me all the time. Every time I say something, you go, no, I want that guy to come over. No, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I got clothes here. <laughs> Let me tell you all something. If we as apostles don't stand up, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers don't stand up to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the church is going down. And guess who God's going to blame? Us. Mm -hmm. Now what we got to do? We, no, see, it doesn't require for us to know this word. What is the requirement? Live this word. So when they say, you can keep that on the air too. Don't cut it off. Keep this on the air because I want them to hear this. So then when they say I'm running around, whoring around, and frustrated and all this kind of different women's, I laugh because it means nothing to me. It only means something to me if I'm doing it. And then there's only one thing to do. Get it right. But if I get frustrated on lies that are told on me, oh, I'm a man, sure, I and mean, I am going to always love women. But I'm not a whoremonger no more. I don't sleep around no more. So I don't worry about what is being said no more in my life. You know what I do, prophet, when they say that? Leave it alone. They were thinking about me. Thank God. I must be doing something right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I worry when they don't do that. Yeah. Uh, I go home, go to church, go to work, come back home, go to church, go to work, go to sleep. In fact, I'm going to bed even earlier than I was before. And when the time comes for me to depart from that secular job and go back into the full-time ministry, which I'm already in the full-time ministry, go into full-time ministry, come home, go to sleep, get up, do it again. Oh, life is so wonderful. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, you can't worry about what people say when you're on the trail of doing right. Is when you're not on the trail of doing right. Because now watch this. You're going to read this in the, in the book of Acts. As a matter of fact, you come up to that when we go to come to the next section. You're going to read right around the fourth verse or fourth chapter, maybe even the third chapter. I like the fourth. Fourth chapter better because four and five. Well, four do it. Well, they slapped him upside the head and beat him. Said, did not we tell you that you can do anything else but don't preach that name? what they do? They ain't going crying. They ain't going saying, you know, y'all pray for me because I'm going through. What you going through? You back to the principles. And the requirements of being back to the principles, you got to suffer for the namesake. Now, you lying on your income tax and they don't give you your income tax is well, not suffering for the namesake. Jesus. 
Oh, you're not paying your rent. Come on. Okay? Come on. And yeah, saying yeah. that the devil oh, has took my apartment away. You know why he took your apartment away? Because <laughs> you didn't you pay the rent. You lied on your income. <laughs> my God. That's not God. No. Nope. That's nope. not suffering for the name's sake <laughs> no. of the Lord. No. Nope. When I went to jail, <laughs> someone wrote me a letter and said, well, the apostles went to jail. Yeah, they did, but they didn't go to jail for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's not put that in there. This ain't God suffering. This is my suffer the consequences of what I shouldn't have did. Come on, you gotta be honest with that. Yeah. I went to jail because I wanted to go to jail. God told me you ain't gotta go to jail. And it wasn't for the namesake of Jesus, neither. It was disobeying the laws. But if they tell you that you can't preach that name, short story, quick story, fast story. Here we go. Watch this. So, 350 people were in the tabernacle, worshiping God, praising God. Everybody was dancing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, glory to God. They were dancing in the name of the Lord. Soldiers came in, had guns. And everybody who want their lives to be saved and want to go on with this Christian who do want to deny this Christian faith, we give you the opportunity to get out right now. 350 people were there. You know how many people were there when that man said that? 25. Okay? Those 25 stood at the altar and they made sure that all those people were out of that door and they locked the door and I'm 25, stood at the altar and said, God, we're about ready to come home and see you in a few seconds. The soldier made sure that the coast was clear and dropped their weapons and said, we just want to make sure who was the true Christians and who wasn't. <laughs> and joined in with those 25 and worshiped God. You're going to be tested as an apostle. Who do you think you are? You're a woman. <laughs> They're talking about you now. <laughs> you just started. Somebody look around you. Do me a favor, daughter. Take that camera and just bring it around the church. Just look around you. Yeah, that's right. Look around you. woman, you were called to be a prop, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Put that camera on her. Look around her. See how powerful the spirit of the Lord is upon her. Amen. Creating things more so now than ever before. And incidentally, put this back at me. That's the chief of staff. Amen. You called to be an apostle? Put, it put that camera on her. He is one who has a church in Tampa, and can I say it? And start another ministry in Sarasota. And doing well with the ministry that she started. And what I saw Sunday was fantastic. And you called to be an apostle? They're gonna talk about you. I put that on there so they can talk about y'all. Yeah, they, they're gonna talk about you. <laughs> Make sure you put it on her. Make sure you do that. Here's one who we talked about, ridiculed, Amen. you're a prophet. And incidentally, she don't like to be called that. Sure don't. She don't even like to be announced as that. Sure don't. She like to hide. Yes, yeah, she does. Out of another man's mouth, let the praises come she forth. Show the right Oh, oh I'm, you, I'm not finished yet. Jesus. Stand up, Max, and come center forward. Max, come center forward. Stand right there. Stand right there. Make sure you put this camera on there. Right there. Make sure you put the camera on my babies. How can y'all be there? <laughs> <laughs> they out the spirit, Apostle. They out the spirit. Oh, I, Would you get the spirit? <laughs> I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry.
two of the finest assistant pastors of King the Living Prophetic Worship Center. Amen. Amen. Who has a fresh anointing been poured on them since God has brought them into a ministry. Amen. That God is using them mightily. Amen. Praise Put the God. camera on these children. Praise God. Amen. Amen. They're going to be talked about. Amen. they being talked about right now. Who it's do they right. think they are? It's because right. he got a pass. She got a pass. Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what? We Point this camera this way. Hey, don't forget. I, I'm sorry. I got a pass, too. There you go. Amen. A very bad one. That perhaps maybe make them pass look like babies or children. But the Lord has has given them. You can go back to your seat. Amen. 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 And then let me really get them in trouble when I say this. That's going to really hate them. And they're going to really talk about you. Because they're going to tell you all. I want all y'all to be talked about. So we see. I want y'all to be talked about. Look at stand up. Stand up, daughter. You scared? You scared, say you're scared. <laughs> Come over here. Come over here if you ain't scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I want them to see what God is doing with these leaders that he's blessing. This one here is a hiding, scared prophet. Yes, she is. But we're pushing her in the front line. Amen. 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 We got to push her in the front line. All and the she way. she finally understand what she really is. Yes. And God is training her to be, weaning her to be a, a prophet of God. Amen. Amen. We just have to take the fear out of her. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Amen. This is one of our upcoming prophets. Yes, Amen. she is. Amen. Amen. Yes. I know they're going to hate me for that one. They ain't going to fight me to the church no more. All right, go ahead and sit down, baby. You scared she was ready to go back and sit down too. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could call you out, but I don't want to get you beat up that night. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a young man <laughs> who's called to be an, an elder and a, pro and a, a, a minister of the a church of the Lord and has Amen. went through. In fact, him and I was in prison together. Hi. <laughs> <Don't laughs> you scared? You scared? All right. He was, I was in prison. Amen. But the Lord Amen. saved me and brought us back together again. Amen. And God is using him in Amen. this ministry. Amen. Amen. Now, y'all scared of that? No. All right. That's Not what at the all. prophets and apostles did. If you're going to be apostles, you Shall might as well suffer Lord. godly persecution. I'm and you make sure you share that and you make sure you put that all over the place. Yeah. Because I want them to come to me. Never scared. I ain't scared of none of them, prophet. Not one of them. Because you want to talk about me, I love you. Watch that. And you can't do nothing about the love I got. Amen. 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 I'm not praying on you. I'm praying Amen. for you. Amen. Amen. And so if sunny. you need me for anything, come on. you call me. Amen. Because I'll be right there yeah. to Amen. come to your rescue. I'm not going to stand Amen. in your church and preach on you. I'm going to stand in your church and preach the Nothing gospel the of gospel. Jesus Christ and encourage your soul. Amen. I love you and you can't do nothing, nothing about, about it. it. I got one more thing to give you. Oh. I love you. I have nothing against you. My heart is clean between me, you, and God. Amen. Amen. With love and kindness, the Bible says, I've not drawn all me. God bless you. Now listen, I want to say something short. Cut that off. 